Eclipse Photon is the great simultaneous release of 2018, the joint annual release comprising 85 Eclipse projects. Here are some Java and Maven improvements of the Eclipse IDE, improvements that have been added since Eclipse Oxygen 3A, which was released about three months ago. Since Oxygen 1A, Eclipse has supported Java 9, and since Oxygen 3A, Java 10 is supported. In Photon, the support of Java 9 and 10 has been further improved. For example, when creating a new Java project, there is a new checkbox on the second page to create a module info Java file. If you leave it checked, a dialog appears asking to create or not to create the module file. In the module file, there are new quick fixes, Control plus 1. For non-existing or empty packages, the creation of an annotation, a class, an enumeration or an interface is suggested. If a required module has a corresponding jar on the class path, it can be moved to the module path via quick fix. For Java modules that use older libraries, it may happen that the code compiles but fails at runtime. For these cases, you can tweak the launch configuration. In the Dependencies tab, click Override Dependencies and enter the arguments, for example, to patch a module or to add modules. If the project is configured for null analysis based on annotations, Eclipse takes null annotations on module level into account now. Eclipse Photon is shipped with JUnit 5.1, which can also be used in a modular Java project. In the launch configuration, tags can be used to specify which tests should be executed. A new feature is that logical expressions can also be used for that. A great new feature is class path separation for test sources. In a plain Java project, you have to do the following to separate test from main code. In the project's Java build path, create a source folder for the test code. Select Contains test source and click Toggle. For this, you have to enable Allow Output Folders for Source Folders and then specify a separate output folder for the test source folder. The module should not require JUnit. JUnit should only be used by test code. For this, in the tab libraries, JUnit has to be moved from the module to the class path and marked as visible only for test sources. Everything that belongs to test sources is visualized with darker icons. Now you just have to move the test code to the test folder and remove the dependency to JUnit in the module definition. You did it! In Maven projects, Eclipse automatically separates test sources. No configuration or manual steps are required. In Gradle projects, Test sources will not yet be automatically separated. But you can tweak the Gradle build script for class path separation. In the problems view, test sources can be filtered out by a so called working set. Also in the Java search, test sources can be filtered out in a similar way. In the call hierarchy, there is now a filter test code checkbox for that. There are also checkboxes in the launch configurations for that, but these are set automatically. A new feature is the new release compiler flag. 
This allows you to write backward compatible code even without the matching JDK. For example, if you want to write Java 7 code with the Java 10 JDK, make sure the release compiler flag is set. As you can see here, the call of a method that has been available since Java 8 is correctly marked as an error in the Java 7 code. The debugging perspective has a new layout. There is more space for code now. The display view has been renamed to Debug Shell. Its functionality remains the same. The thread names are updated now, which is useful for worker threads using a thread pool. Not for JUnit, but for Java application, launch prototypes can be specified. In a prototype, values are set like for a normal Java application. In contrast to a normal launch configuration, there is an addition tab called Prototype. In this tab, the attributes can be selected that should be used in linked launch configurations. To link a launch configuration to a prototype, right-click it and choose Link Prototype. Linked launch configurations are listed below their prototype. As you can see here, the old value has been overridden with the value of the prototype. There is a new preference to escape non-ASCII characters when inserting them into a string. By default, it is disabled and can be enabled in the Preferences dialog in Java, Editor, Typing. There is a new cleanup action to remove redundant modifiers, like in this example. You can find it in Source, Clean up, in the cleanup dialog, in the unnecessary code tab, at the bottom as remove redundant modifiers. The formatter profile dialog has been redesigned. There is now a filter field to get to the desired settings faster. Bulk changes can be applied by a single click. In the preview panel, you can now use your own code. Nice, isn't it? The Java, Java EE, JavaScript and Modeling IDE packages are shipped with a tip of the day. If you like, you can display the tip of the day each time when you start Eclipse. The Maven POM editor, by default, does not display the overview page as before, but displays the POM XML file instead. As already mentioned, the Maven integration uses the scope of dependencies to distinguish between main and test-only libraries. In addition, also the release compiler flag is supported automatically. These were some of the Java and Maven improvements in Photon. If you haven't seen them yet, watch also the video of the general and Git improvements. The playlist contains videos of IDE improvements of previous releases including one each for Oxygen 1A, Oxygen 2, Oxygen 3 and Oxygen 3A. Thank you for watching and happy coding!